What's going on everyone? Today, we're catching halibut. I'm gonna show you what it takes to catch them from the shore, and then fillet them, and then cook them into a delicious recipe. It's not my recipe, but we'll go through all of that in this video. So stay tuned and check out some of the shore fishing action here on the Kenai Peninsula. There it is. Doesn't feel very big. Oh yeah! That's a hell of it. Take the bait, take the bait. Come on, there it is, there it is, there it is. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Ah, oh, damn it. Yeah. Oh yeah. <sighs> Woo. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Not like that. What is this thing? Looks like a shark. Oh yeah. It's a nice looking shark. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of people ask me, what is it that I use to catch halibut off the shore? Very easy. Six ounce triangle weight on a slider. This is braided line, 50 pound. And then that goes to a swivel, 50 pound mono. At the end, big hook. Just thread that on. Oh! <laughs> I think the line broke. <laughs> oh, God, really? Shit. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, take it. Oh. 
Here we go. Here we go. Take it. Take it. Yeah. Got him. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh wow. Woo! Let's fillet this halibut. First thing you want to do is wash off all the soil, sand, get some of that slime off of it. These fish are a little bit slimy. And that's just something you're gonna have to work with. Make sure you got yourself a sharp fillet knife here. Uh, and then on the white side, I like to cut the white side first. You can see the lateral line here of the fish. There's a line that goes right down the middle. And on this one, it kind of curves down below the fin up to the gill plate. What I'm going to do is just cut right down the middle along that line. And it gets a little easier once you get once you get to it. You can start to feel that backbone. And what we're trying to do is just cut this fish right in half, almost like a zipper. And at this point, you want to cut straight down and slice the skin. At this part, it's a lot like filleting any other fish. Now that you've kind of cut it in half, this makes it easier to work with you're going to cut away from you underneath the flesh and you'll feel the knife scraping along the bones and that's really good that's what you want to feel and I always like to run my blade a couple of times before I like to go in deep I'm, what I'm doing is separating the meat from the bones and once you get some separation in there, you can see that it's coming along nicely. Oh yeah. Whoa. She's sliding. She's this is a this is a bigger halibut. I'm happy with this one. Here we go. There's that separation. That's what I'm talking about. And we'll skip ahead, but you follow the bones along the fish. And that leaves you with this beautiful halibut fillet. Look at that white flesh, boneless. Just, just a beautiful fish. And now we can start on the other side of this fish. I like to start from the tail to the head, left to right, whatever direction the fish is facing. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did. We're going to scrape along those bones and just separate that meat off the skeleton here. And this is just such a lovely animal. This is a good size too for filleting. Wow. And it's so easy to see that separation. It's really easy. Look at that. Just like you're unfolding. Like it's like you're unwrapping a Christmas gift. Whew. And I get just as excited as I did on Christmas Day when I'm catching these things off the shore because this is just a real treat. This is just a beautiful animal, beautiful flesh. This is gonna taste so good. Now we get up toward the stomach here and the belly fat. Now I was talking to a guy who loves belly fat and he was saying it's the best part of the fish. And I'm definitely going to eat this belly fat with this filet. I'm going to incorporate it. 
because I don't see any reason why I shouldn't. Look at that. Wow. You can just see how pristine this creature is and the, and the clean water that it lives in up here in Alaska. And I'm just really lucky to, to have caught it and then to be able to fillet it and eat it. Here we go. You can start cutting along the fins and start taking this fillet off. Oh, it's that easy. It is that easy. There we go. That's two fillets. And don't forget, these things have pretty big cheeks and every fish has good cheek meat, but not every fish is big enough to make it worth it to harvest. But in a halibut, you always want that cheek meat. And you can see the, the gill plate here that I'm trying to follow along with my knife. And we're just cutting, we're just cutting it out. It makes a nice little oyster. Oh yeah. There you go. Some cheek meat, you just fry that up. That's good. That's good eating right there. There's still a lot of meat on this head. Maybe I'll do something with that, make a broth or a soup. Okay, now we flip it over and check that out. Same thing on this side that we did on the white side. Follow that lateral line all the way down. Oh yeah, that's nice. The skin does get a little tough here on the back side as opposed to the belly side, but it's not, it's nothing like shark or if you've ever cut open a walleye, it's a lot thinner than walleye skin. Here we are. And now we're, we're scraping along that back, those bones. And we don't want to lose any of this meat. Here we go. Don't force the blade. Just let it glide. Let it glide right over this fish. Cut all the way up to the head. Make sure, keep that fillet coming all the way to the top of the head. There's a lot of meat up here right by the eye. Oh, there it is. These fillets are going to be a little bit thicker than the other side, but wow, this is good. This is good. And one of the reasons I like to do the other side first is because they are a little bit thinner. If I make any mistakes, I want to do it on the not as valuable side. And I do the same thing when I'm filleting a bunch of fish. Like I had two halibut. Before I made this video, I actually filleted the smaller one first just to get the hang of it make sure I wasn't making any big mistakes and I wasn't going to lose any good meat. Oh yeah. And then of course you just, it's the same process as it was on the other side. In this fish you get four fillets instead of two. And that's something that makes them so special and sought after. So we can catch them right from the shore. You know, that's a big deal. And here we go. That is a nice fillet. Look how long that is. Look how much meat you're going to get off that. That's lovely. And of course, guys, you just do the same thing on this side. Um, it's not that hard. It's pretty easy to do. So if you find yourself with a halibut, go ahead. Don't forget the cheek meat. Flay it up. You're going to have a lot of meat from it. Now after you catch the halibut, of course you want to cook it. You want to eat it. Uh, and I'm using a recipe from Hook, Line, and Supper. Hank Shaw is kind of a legend in the outdoor community. I'm not a chef myself. I just catch the fish. So we're going to see what he... He says to do with it, but we're going to make halibut puttanesca. A halibut puttanesca. I'm Italian. This is going to be real good. What I'm doing right now, I'm heating up the oil. 
And the first thing you want to do is get your fillets here. Just look at these fillets. That's nice. Uh, and you want to lightly coat these in flour. And so, there you go. Just enough to get a nice golden brown crisp on them when you throw them into the oil. Oh yeah, that's going to be really good. And it's such a nice fish. You don't want to overcoat it with flour because you don't want to take away any of the flavors. All we're trying to do is accentuate this the flavor on this halibut. And I like to coat all, all the sides. Oh yeah. Shake off into the excess. And now you, you have this dry, floury filet. Doesn't stick to anything, that's perfect. Throw that right into the oil, cook that for a few minutes. And there we go, these are, as you can see, these are the perfect size halibut for cooking, they fill up the pan. What this recipe does so well, and the reason that I wanna make it, is because it uses very simple ingredients, just some tomatoes, some olives, some capers, a little bit of basil, onion, and that's just gonna be really nice with this fish. It's so fresh that I don't want to do anything that isn't going to make it taste better. I always have a strainer here. I always put the, whatever I'm frying, I put into a strainer, let it cool off, let any of the oil drip off of it. Well, what we're trying to do is make that flesh stay together uh, and get a nice crisp to it. There we go. That's looking really nice. That looks good. Let this one cook just a little bit longer. Pull that out of the frying pan. So now we want to flash cook the onions and garlic. Just a small onion and about two cloves of garlic here. Throw that in there. Get that cooking evenly. We're gonna cook this for a minute. And that smells really good. I love the smell of garlic. You can see it's starting to brown up. That's what we want to see. When the onions and the garlic are a little brown, that's when we want to re-add the fish to the pan. There we go. It's okay if it breaks apart. That's kind of what we want. So I'm just gonna help it out. And now we're gonna throw in basil and parsley, fresh, of course. And then one can diced tomatoes. Where I live, fresh tomatoes are kind of hard to come by, but canned tomatoes, I've heard, I think they taste great. And I've heard from some people they're actually more nutritious for you, but this depends on preference. And make sure you get a nice even heat with everything that you're cooking. That's looking really nice. Always add olives, capers, you get that Mediterranean flavor. As for spices, red pepper flaked. Salt. You gotta put pepper in. Mmm, that smells amazing. And the recipe calls for 
a nice crusty bread, so I got this fresh sourdough from the grocery store. Oh wow. Look at that, huh? That's crusty. Wow. I'm just gonna tear it. And there you have it, fresh halibut, cooked Italian style. This looks really good. Mmm, wow. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's... That's good. That's really good. Well, guys, if you like that video, go ahead, share, like, subscribe. You're gonna have a whole bunch of new fishing videos, some cooking videos, all kinds of stuff coming out here. So just smash that subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys later.